We've been doing a series called Rest. Tonight is the final one. Okay? So I hope y'all got it. You know? I pray y'all got it. Okay? Uh, Matthew 11. Right here at the top. Matthew 11. This is the final series of Rest tonight. Okay? Yeah. And we're going to go over it. But let's read our golden text and let us pray. All right? Matthew 11, starting at verse 28, says, Come unto me. Hello. All Come right. unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for this word that you may come forth, Father. We thank you for the rest of I pray that everybody got blessed to it in the name of Jesus. I pray that uh, the young lady who just been taken off to the hospital, I pray that you send your healing power, Father, that the doctors touch their hands and nurses and everyone else, and that she come back here uh, refreshed and healed in the mighty name of Jesus. So uh, as your manservant with this last one, let him walk on the word of your word, and let him be preached that you may hear this. We ask these things in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Let's just do a recap real quick. Tonight we're going to talk about the feeling of homelessness and detachment. The feelings of homelessness and detachment. There are about four more other lessons. We're going to cover a whole lot. For those of you who haven't been here, we've been on this for about, what, five, six, seven weeks now? Yeah. And uh, those of you who grab it, I pray to God that you grab it and have those sheets uh, that really will help you. Uh, rest again means what? Rational, emotive, spiritual therapy. And what that does is does what? It, it, it was done by a man named Dr. McKinney in Philadelphia. He took it out to the prisons, and he was teaching people how to get away from their substance abuses, their mental illnesses, and all those types of things. Instead of it being psychologically, because in the psychological world, they will say R-E-T, rationally uh, emotive therapy. But these are Christians that decide to add the spiritual element, rational emotive spiritual therapy. Okay? But Jesus is the only one who can give you rest anyway. Ain't that right? Amen. So he said we need to learn these uh, equation, the ABCD equation, which is A is our activating event, as we told you before. The activating event you can't do nothing about. It's if someone walk up to you, call you a name, or just come out the blue and, and smack you. What can you do about it? But what will happen is B, our belief about that activating event. And some of us, we have that street language and that street knowledge that if a certain person do certain things, we're going to react a certain way. Because what? We have a belief about it, what's thought about it. But he says, now change that belief to what God has put in you. And no matter what the activating event, we are going to put our belief toward it and walk in love. Right? Okay? But if we stay on the belief about our activating event negatively, then our consequential feelings, our emotions, will cause us to act out in what we do or bad behavior. But if we use our spiritual side of our belief, our consequential feelings or our emotions will lean more on God, trust more in God, that our behavior will line up with God. Amen? Amen. So he also told us to do what? We must also learn during those activated events that we get something called an SDT. Uh, what is that? SDD, self-destructive thought. So immediately a self-destructive thought comes in, and we must replace it with a what? SRT, scripture replacement thought. But the only way you want to know a scripture replacement thought, you have to read your Bible. Amen. If you don't read your Bible, you don't have a scripture replacement thought. But I will also say, if you haven't read your Bible, change whatever negatively is going on in your head, the emotions, to something good. So if somebody say you're, you're nothing and never going to be nothing, you just tell, you tell yourself in your head, I'm always going to be something. Right. Amen? Amen. Somebody say, you'll never, you know, you will never achieve anything. Say, I've already been an achiever. You know, I'm going to achieve and keep achieving. you got to change the way you think. And it's a famous scripture in Romans 12 that said, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen? Amen. 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 So until you learn to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, you're going to always have a self-destructive thought. But to get rid of them, you must learn to T-E-R, trace, erase, replace. There were people in my addiction day, all they wanted to know was, well, when did you first get high? But they never took me back to the root. And when I finally got with a good counselor, he took me all the way back to the age of two. And back then, I wasn't getting high, right? But I had something that caused that activating event that, that transpired into the rest of my life, that by the time I turned 8 and 12, I was getting high. 
But it started at two. So he had to teach me to pull it up from the root. Because no matter what, if you don't pull the weed from the ground out the root, guess what's going to do? It's coming back. So you got to locate the root. And until you locate the root, you are going to always act out in wrong behavior. So tonight we're going to be talking about understanding the feelings of homelessness and detachment. Uh, I wanted to bring another one, but we've been talking about addictions, depression, uh, uh, loneliness. We've been talking about them all over the last few weeks. And when I finally went through the book, the Holy Spirit just said, hit this one and let's start fresh. Okay? So starting next week, we're going to be doing something brand new. Matter of fact, we, we're going up uh, to Canaan Land Ministries on the 4th of August. And I believe the 18th of August, too. So God is opening up a lot of doors for us to keep on moving. All right? And these are the verses that God has brought out to me. Everybody go to Mark 5. Mark 5. Before I get into the book a little bit. Mark 5. As I prayed about this, I said, God, show me some examples of people who are dealing with homelessness and dealing with detachment in the Word of God. Because I like a lot of things in the Word of God. I like to use examples out of the Word of God to... Uh, Bring it to our plaque and let you realize you're not the only one. You are not alone in this. Amen? Amen. There ain't no way you're alone in this. Amen. The preacher been there, believe me. Yo, you have this experienced nothing I have. You know, I don't want to get too heavy and too deep tonight. You know, I see we got guests. <laughs> I want to thank y'all for coming out and serving this evening. I know a pastor was out. He appreciates you a lot. All right? Thank you so very much. It's very hard to find people who want to give up their time. You know, and I hope we didn't waste your time. But that's something we can't repay. Amen. So, I'll be, you know, y'all need to thank them for the night. Can we thank them like every man? Amen. 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 All right. Yeah. They did a good job out there in the uh, closing call. Okay. Everybody except that guy. <laughs> Amen. And let's just start at verse 1. And I hope God allows me to bring this out with clarity. Amen. Amen. Starting at verse 1. Mark 5, starting at verse 1. We're going to go through about 20 verses here to bring out the whole story. Okay. And they came over to the other side of the sea into the country of uh, Garden, Garden, I guess. And when he was out, when he had come out of the ship, immediately there met him, out of his homes, a man with an unclean spirit. Immediately, they met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. Now, to me, that man right there, if he's living in the tombs, he must have been what? Homeless. Mm -hmm. He had me. He's living amongst the tombs. Mm -hmm. And most people who are homeless carry demons. Come on. They're usually schizophrenic. They have mental illness. Mm -hmm. Or they're bound by something. Mm -hmm. Or they wouldn't be homeless. Mm -hmm. Come on now. But watch what happens, please. I'm not beating you up for being homeless because I've been homeless. I'm going to show you why you have to go through your homelessness and why God can use you in this condition. Are you ready to be used in this condition? Amen. 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 Or are you ready to stay in that condition? Oh, Amen. Amen. Let God use you through this thing. Because if you don't experience it, you won't appreciate what you're ready to take. See, I appreciate where God's taking me from today. Because see, if you can't, if you haven't experienced it, you give yourself glory when God begins to bless you. Instead of realizing they have never had nothing to do with you. Amen. Amen. Verse 4 again. And when he was coming out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs. His living was among the tombs. And no man could bind him. No, not with chains. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains that had been plucked asunder by him. And the feathers broken in pieces, neither could any man tame them. That word, no man could tame them, couldn't control them. Nobody could talk to them. I like to say that's like almost talking to a drunk. You can't talk to a drunk. You can't tame him, you can't, you know, you might have to wait till he's sober up. Because you ain't going to be able to get through to him. Nobody could tame him. Amen? Mm -hmm. Verse 5. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. Amen. There are a lot of people who are doing that today. It blows my mind to see young folk cutting themselves. And I ask them in the rehabs, why do you cut yourself? Because they get enjoyment from it. It's the only way they can release the tension. 
that's going on inside. Y'all never met people who do that? Yes. No. Yeah. 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 The world may call it uh, sadomasochistic, okay? But there are people who get enjoyment from cutting themselves. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is, it's a lot of young people that do that. Mm -hmm. And it blows my mind. And they ain't on drugs. They just depressed or they just need some type of resource to cut themselves. Yeah. Better than me. Amen. Verse 6. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. Thank that something. He ran and worshipped him. Why did he do that? Verse 7. And cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure you, thee by God, that thou torment me not. So was it the man running to him or was it the demon? demon. Ain't that something the demon can recognize God's anointing on him? See, that demon saw Jesus. It's almost like the one in Paul. God, Paul, I know Jesus, I know who he is. But this one knew Jesus. And he said, oh, what are you doing here? You too early to send us to hell. That demon knew. That's why he was talking. Let's keep going. Verse 8. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is your name? Every demon got a name and every demon got a sin, people. Every demon has a name, and every demon has a sin. You want me to name a few? Yeah, I'll name a few. Name. Fornicator. Adulterer. Drug addict. Idolatry. Idolatry. Come on. Liar. Liar. Come on. Cheat. Thief. Come on. Come on. And some of them are called low-level imps. They're called imps, because they're so childish, we allow them in us. They're called imps. That's the lowest form of a demon you can get to. Amen? I'm glad. See, y'all know. Y'all know. Why? Because y'all talk to them from now Amen. Verse 9. And he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered, say, my name is Legion, for we are many. Now, that's very important. My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought them much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now, there was there near unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. Now, that automatically tells you that these guys couldn't have been Jewish. That automatically tells you the story that they're not Jews and they're not Jewish because Jews could not sell swine, be around swine, or even smell swine. So that let me know they were Gentile, non-Jew. Right? Now let's see what happened here. Verse 12. And all the devils we saw him say, send us into them swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. He said, go ahead. Go ahead, call them swine. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. There were about 2,000. There were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. Now that's really crazy to me. You know what I mean? Because here it is, this man had at least 2,000 demons in him. That really blows my mind. That he had at least 2,000. But the name Legion, watch this. When you look at the Roman army, because I looked it up last night, because I always thought it was just 2,000. But Legion meant there were up to at least 6,000 demons in that man. 6,000. Because a legion in the Roman army is 6,000 more. So if this demon says my name is Legion, I mean he was at least 6,000 of them. But watch what the pigs do. It's 2,000 pigs that carry some demons. And what did they do? It said they watched this. It said what they do. And verse 14. And they choked and ran into the sea. And they that the fed on the swine fed and told the city and they in the country. They ran and killed themselves. Right? Why we are smarter than a pig will hold 6,000 demons. Amen. But a pig says, I ain't holding no demon in me and go run and kill itself. Is that pig smarter than us? Yes. A pig 